group of local criminal justice reformers has organized a week of action on solitary confinement to raise awareness of what they consider the cruelty of the practice to be, which 80 to 100,000 Americans experience every single day. As part of the effort, a play on the issue is premiering tonight at Boston University. It's called Mariposa and the Saint and tells the story of a woman locked in solitary confinement for nearly three years, all through the letters Mariposa exchanged with a playwright. Here's a little bit of it. Last night, another girl in the shoe hung herself. I watched them drag her body out of her cell and down the steps and onto the stretcher. Each of these women are a part of me, and each one worthy of better than this. It is very timely as Massachusetts legislators are considering a bill that would limit the use of solitary in state prisons. Joining me are Liz Matos, she's a staff attorney at Prisoners Legal Services. Liz, good to meet you. And Benito Vega, who spent more than a year, well, months in solitary and works with the Vincentian Reentry Organizing Project. Did I get that right? You did. Which helps people coming out of prison among its other missions. By the way, Essex County Sheriff Frank Cousins, who supports the practice in certain circumstances, agreed to be here and then he had to, unfortunately, he had to cancel. Let me start with you, Liz, just get some information. They said 80 to 100,000 nationally every day. Roughly how many in Massachusetts are on, in solitary on an average day? Right, so uh, it, on an average day, I think most of the beds are full. There are 500 solitary confinement beds or segregation beds in the DOC in 124 in the most restrictive unit in the Department of Corrections. And how long is the average person in one of those solitary beds? So uh, we don't really know because the stat is not reported, but we have clients who have been in solitary confinement for as long as, well, the, the case we know the longest is 18 years in Massachusetts. 18 years? Yes, 18 now, years. And are we the outlier? From what I understand, we're sort of trailing the bus we are on reform on this thing. We're a lot tougher and a lot more uh, accepting of this practice than a lot of other yep. states. Right? We're one of a handful of states that allow prisoners to be sentenced up to 10 years for one disciplinary infraction. So that's 10 years in a room the size of a small bathroom with one hour at most um, or five hours a week at most out of out of cell time and uh, with no hope of release until that sentence is One over. last thing that I hope is hopeful, there was an incredibly painful story, this Khalif Browder, who's this young teen, this mm -hmm. kid who was in Rikers Island for mm -hmm. stealing a backpack. Mm -hmm. Two years mm -hmm. in prison as a result, left, ended up killing himself, as most people think, as a result of this. That's what prompted the president to say no juveniles go to solitary right. in federal prisons. We don't put juveniles in solitary, do we? I mean, technically, no, because we raised the age to, to 18 in Massachusetts, but there are still, you know, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds. So late teens. Spending plenty of time in solitary confinement in Massachusetts. Benito, I know you're a reformer now, but at one point you were in the system. You were, uh, uh, my understanding is for four months and then another time two months in solitary confinement. Can you describe what, what is that like? I mean, what's, what are the conditions? What's it like every day? Well, there's really nothing to talk about. It's not a good experience. Um, but it's a very lonely time in there. Um, the experience is um, very isolating. You have no human contact at all whatsoever. You at times um, have conversations with yourself because you need that human interaction, human um, conversation. You want to hear that human voice. So you start these conversations um, on yourself, with yourself in order to get through the day or yell across the, the hallway to another individual who's there just to get some noise or some type of some human communication. Contact. That's right. What did they say you did that uh, caused them to shove you in the solitary? I was actually put in there. There was a fight that broke out in the yard in the facility that I was in and I was associated with a local gang, um, which I had nothing to do with and was um, placed in solitary confinement because where I was playing dominoes at at the time the fight broke out and there was a whole bunch of Latinos in the yard and we all got sent to. Are you, were you a different person when you went into solitary and when you came out of solitary? I sure am. Today. How so? How was that? How, how did it The reactions, the way I react today um, in regards to my contact with other people, people standing behind me, the way I stand at the stores, the way I react to certain noises um, or people's uh, walking by me, um, it's totally different. You're always at, at edge and you're always trying to see who's around you instead of just being comfortable. Because of that time, not because, because of, of prison itself, but because of solitary. Because of that solitary. How big is that cell? It's not big at all. It's Probably a little bit bigger than the back of an ambulance about bus. Six by, <laughs> six by ten feet. Six mm -hmm. by ten feet. Mm -hmm. You know what I understand about this? And by the way, if someone uh, commits a crime and prison is the appropriate remedy, my view is that's where they should be. However, this I don't get. 
I don't understand why. Have there been cases that we've gone to the Supreme Court saying in many circumstances, extended periods of time in solitary confinement violate the Eighth Amendment? It's cruel and unusual punishment. Again, I'm not soft on crime, yes. but have there been those cases? Not yet, but Justice Breyer and Justice Kennedy have definitely signaled that they'd be interested in hearing such a case. There have been uh, cases alleging that putting, not alleging, uh, deciding that placing mentally ill prisoners, specifically seriously mentally ill prisoners in solitary confinement is an Eighth Amendment violation. But the case hasn't been, te hasn't been tested in the Supreme Court yet? Beyond that, it hasn't been tested. Do you both agree that in certain circumstances it's appropriate, meaning if, uh, if uh, prison authorities legitimately believe that you're a threat to yourself, or you're extremely violent and you're a threat to uh, a prison guard mm -hmm. or to another inmate, in those circumstances, certain lengths of time in solitary are defensible, are they not, Benito? Um, it depends how you classify that. You know, sometimes you're being put in there just because you can't just say I'm a threat just because I looked at But what if you around. are? What if you're really violent and I'm a guard and you're, you have regularly threatened me and the conclusion is, unless you're segregated from the rest of the prison population, I, the prisoner, or I, the guard, are at great risk because of you. Isn't that a reasonable situation? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, you know, what do you think? The, uh, what do we do with that? I don't mean him, but what do we do with that So the that bill doesn't abolish solitary confinement. What does it do? It limits it. So you can place someone, if they're a threat or a danger, the facility retains the authority to keep that person in, in solitary confinement for a period of time. If you've committed a disciplinary infraction, violent infraction, uh, something that's dangerous, you disciplinary segregation would be limited to 15 days. But if you continue to pose a threat, mm -hmm. you can stay in solitary so confinement until could, you're no longer a threat. What couldn't they do? What couldn't they do that they can now do? If your legislation They wouldn't pissed. be able to leave you in there for three years because you're talking back to a guard or you're spitting or you're having you're just having a bad day. Are there people in solitary confinement now in Massachusetts who fit that description, who did those kinds of things? Absolutely. And have spent years in solitary confinement? Yeah, absolutely. Defying an order, um, being disruptive. And we're not talking there are people who are spending long periods of time in solitary confinement for no reason at all. Oh, well, meaning a Right. Like when I was put in there, um, they said, oh, no, you're being, you're being placed in segregation until you get transferred back up to maximum security Walpole, but there was no set date. So you don't even know what there to was look it. forward to. We For only have a minute left, Benito. See, my, I think you make a powerful case, but my analysis from afar here, and you're working with ex-prisoners as well, okay. There's very little constituency for this. A kid's killed uh, in DCF care, Department of Children and Families. We all wring our hands, we're all upset, and then ultimately we move on because it's those people's kids. Well, you're not us. You're those people. You did something, but we don't care about you. How do you convince a legislator that the lives of somebody who have committed a crime should matter to them? What do you say to them, quickly, it, if you can? It'll be easy, a public safety matter. Like, if you treat the issue while incarcerated or give them the proper programming while incarcerated, you'll make your community a lot safer. Right. It's you're, cheaper, you're too. You're cut off from programming while you're in solitary mm -hmm. confinement, so that's really important to, to note. But also, uh, it's a public safety matter, mm -hmm. absolutely. 96% of prisoners are released back into society. There's uh, an abundance of evidence showing that solitary confinement causes permanent damage after 15 days. So why allow a practice that is expensive and that has already been proven to not work? And states across the country that have reduced it have shown a decline in violence mm -hmm. and are saving multi-million dollars. It's Liz, uh, thank many you. Millions I appreciate it. Thanks for the work you're doing. Absolutely. Benito, good to Thanks meet you. Thanks for having Thank us. you. Good luck.